Hi, in this video, we will see how we could formulate the state space model of an active suspension system. So the outline of this video, we have a physical system, which is the suspension system. We will drive the differential equation of the system, and then we will build the state space model of the system. And finally, we will simulate the system in the matter. So we'll just have the system, we will simulate the system without any controller. Now, the main objective of the suspension system is to isolate the car body from road disturbance. Now, there are three, uh, three types of the suspension system, which is broadly speaking. The first one, which is the conventional one, the passive, which just has the spring and the damper between the, the car body and the wheel. So, as a compared to the passive, in the semi-active, we have a controllable damper. For the, the third type, which is the active suspension system, has also an actuator in parallel with the damper and spring. And now in this video, we are focusing on the active suspension system. So the structure of the active suspension system is the following. We have two masses connected with each other. So the first mass is the body of the car. The second mass is the wheel mass. And these two masses are connected by the spring and damper and actuator. And also we have a spring connected between the wheel of the tire or the wheel and also the rod. Now in the system there are four states. The first two states, which is the position and velocity of the first uh, mass, which is the mass of the body. The second other two states, which is the velocity and position of the wheel mass. Now also we have the D, which is the disturbance which is a vertical displacement, uh, represent the road disturbance. Now, the basic uh, element of any mass spring damper is the mass and spring and damper. Now, the mass accelerated in proportional to the force, and the force in the mass is equal to the mass multiplied by the, uh, the acceleration. Now, the force generated in the sprint is equal uh, to is proportional to the position so the force is equal to the uh, stiffness of the spring multiplied by the x which is the position and finally the force generated in the damper is proportional to the velocity of the mass so the force in the damper is b which is the coefficient of the damping multiplied by the x dot which is the velocity having said that now we will build the free body diagram in order to drive the equation of motion of the system now because we have two masses so we will isolate and we drive the equation which is related to the first mass and also for the second mass now for the first mass we have a mass and there is a force applied by the actuator which is in the up direction and also there is a spring and damper which is try to take the, 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 the body of the mass down now because we have two masses so the force in the spring is the difference between the position of the first mass minus the position of the second mass. So this is the formula of the force generated by the spring which is connected two masses. And also for the damper is the difference between the two velocity of the first mass and the second mass. So the force generated uh, of the damper which is related to the first mass which is the mass of the body is the B which is the coefficient of the damper and the difference between the first, uh, first uh, velocity and the second velocity of the other mass, which is the wheel, the, wheel, uh, the mass of the wheel. So, having that, the second Newton law says that the summation of force, so the force in the mass, is equal to the summation of all the force surrounding by this mass. So, we are, we are assuming that the force in the up direction is in the positive and the force in the down, which is the negative. So we have this formula, which is minus k, the difference between the position, minus b, the difference of the velocity, plus the force that comes from the actuator. Now, for the purpose of developing the state space module of the suspension system, we are need the x double dot in this side, and all the remaining in the other side, and we need to isolate the each state of the system. So we have like the first state, which is x1, the position of the first mass. The second state is the position of the second mass. The third is the velocity of the first mass, the velocity of 
the second mass and also the force that applied to the first on the first mass by using the same procedure now we will build the free body diagram of the second mass so now we have two forces that apply on this force in the up, up direction and we have two forces in the down direction the one is come from the actuator and also from the road disturbance and here we also assume that the force in the up direction is the difference between these two position and the force which is comes from the damper is the difference between these two position now again the summation of all these force with uh, with uh, should be equal to the force from the mass so the the, the mass of the wheel multiplied by the, the second acceleration which is x2 is k1 and the difference between the position plus b the difference between the velocities now this is in the up direction in the down direction we have the fairest force which is comes from the difference between the, the the position of the mass and the road disturbance and also the force uh, that comes from the actuator and for the purpose of developing the state space we also we need the x double dot in this direction and all the remaining state on other direction so we have the first uh, state which is the x1 the second state x2 the first uh, the first position of the first mass x dot one and x2 dot which is the velocity on the second and also here we have the disturbance so in this equation and also we have the uh, the actuator which is the force that comes from the actuator so this are these two equation are the differential equation or on the first mass on the second mass based on these two equation we will develop the state space module now the basic general formula of the state space is the following and if you have need more information about how uh, to design the state space module of any system i will put link in the description for more information about the state space modeling now the linear time invariant continuous state space is has these two uh, equation so the x dot which is the derivative of the state equal to the a which is the dynamic matrix multiplied by the x which is the state of the system plus b uh, the input matrix multiplied by the u which is the input force to the uh, the input to the system which is the force of the actuator y is the output of the system c is the matrix uh, the output matrix x is the state of the system d is the forward matrix and u is the input to the system now because we have a disturbance so this formula has an, another term which is the w the uh, the disturbance matrix and d which is the disturbance input to the system so we will use this formula to build the state space of our system now we have the equation of motion for the first mass and the second mass we will develop the open loop state space equation based on this formula now we have the the, uh, the derivative state of the system we have the state of the system we have the first input to the system which is the actuator and we have the second input to the system which is the uh, the road disturbance and also we have the y which is the output uh, and we don't have d which is the, the connection between the output and the input to the system now if we look to these two equations there is no any relationship between x1 dot and x1 so we put zero but the relationship between x1 dot and x1 dot is the same the same element so we put one and there is no any relationship between x1 dot and x2 so we put zero there is no any relationship between x1 dot and x2 dot so we put zero now x2 we have equation for x uh, sorry x1 double dot we have equation for x1 double dot so now what's the relation between x1 double dot and x1 so we look to this formula it's minus k1 mb so we put it the relationship between x1 double dot and x1 dot so this is x1 dot minus b over mb for the relationship between x1 uh, double dot and x2 so this is x2 k1 over mb and what's the relationship between x1 double dot and x2 dot which is b over m so because we have a formula for x1 double dot so we put the coefficient of each state and the same as x1 dot x2 dot we don't have any formula so we put 0 0 0 1 because the relationship between x2 dot and x2 dot is the same so we put 1 but there is no relation with the x1 the x1 dot and x2 
and again the same procedure for the x2 double dot so this is the formula of x2 double dot so for the x1 this is the coefficient we put it for the x1 dot this is the coefficient so we put it so for the x2 this is the coefficient and we put it and also for the x2 dot this is the coefficient and we put it now we generate this is the a matrix which is the dynamic matrix which is the relationship between x dot and x now b is the relationship between x dot and the input to the system so the input of the system is the force that comes from the actuator so for the x1 we don't have so we put zero for x1 double dot we have one over m b for x2 zero for x2 double dot we have minus one over m uh, of the wheel so this is the b matrix which is the input matrix the relationship between the x dot and the input to the system now w is the relationship between this, the derivative state of the system and also the disturbance so if we look to the x1 and x1 double dot which is this one there is no any disturbance and x2 dot there is no any uh, equation for x2 dot so all of these are zero only the disturbance effect on the x2 double dot which is this one uh, here should be another dot so uh, the relationship between x2 double dot and the disturbance is k2 over m uh, w so these are the the first equation of the system the state space the second equation is the output now the question is which state we are interesting in our system so i will consider in this video that I am interested in the x1 so I need to see what will happen to the position of the body of a mass uh, the mass of the body when the disturbance happen so I need to see what the effect the, inf uh, the impact the effect of the road disturbance on the position of the of the car body so that's why I will put one on the first state which is x1 because that I am interesting and zero for the remaining because I'm not interesting to see what will happen to the velocity of the body or the position of the wheel or the velocity of the wheel however if you are have different objective so you could choose any c to suit your object now if i want to put these two as the input to the system so the actuator and the disturbance i will combine these two as the following so we combine this which is the B and the W in one matrix and this is the input to the system so this is the A now this is the new B which is combining the B which is the input to the system and the W which is the disturbance of the system and this is my objective the out of my system now because I want to simulate the system in the MATLAB so I need to know the value of the body mass the wheel mass the stiffness of the spring the stiffness of the second spring and also the damper so these are the, the 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 values that i will use in the simulation now the last thing we need to know before we go to the matlab how we will simulate the road disturbance so i will assume that i have two pumps uh, in the road i will assume that i have double pumps in the uh, in the uh, in the road and the formula that i will be used to generate these two pumps it's just an uh, equation that has some cosine and sine. So I will assume that from 0 to 0 0.5 in that time, I will have this, the first pumps. And lambda is just how much the height that you would like to have for these pumps. And also I will assume from 2 to 2.5 seconds, I will have another pumps in the road. So I just need to simulate how the, my system, which is the, the suspension system and the position of the uh, body of the, of the car, what will happen to that if this disturbance will uh, affect the system? Now let's go to the MATLAB and see how the code will be for this case. Now as I always starting with CLC to remove all the common window, close to close all the, uh, the windows open, open and clear all to remove all these value that comes from the history. Now my simulation is just 10 seconds and my sampling time is 0.01. So this is my simulation and my sampling time. Now in the beginning I will simulate the road disturbance. So as I said here I have two heights which is different height. Which is lambda 1 and lambda 2. So I will assume these two is 0.02 and 0.03. Now as I said from 
2 to 0.5 from 0 to 0.5 i have the first road pumps and from 2 to 2.5 i have the second pumps now if i want to simulate just the road disturbance before i go to the system so if i run the code you could see that this is your road disturbance so the first one is 0.04 meter the second one is 0.06 meter so this is the two pumps that will affect my system now if i continue writing the code so this is the parameter that i already uh, put in the system and then i will drive the state space uh, of the system so this is the a which is this one this is the a matrix and this is the b which is contained the two the two columns the first one of the b the second one is for the w the disturbance and then i have c and as i said i just have the first state is my output and this is the d and because i have two inputs to the system so there are two inputs to the system so you have to put zero and zero for each input and i will use the the command which is ss to represent the to represent the state space of the system so if i just run the simulation up to this point you could see this is your state space model of the system so this is your state space model of your suspension system the a the b c and d now if we want to simulate the system so as i said i will not put any controller so i will assume that the control force is zero for all the simulation time and I already generate the disturbance from this formula. So already I have UD, which is represent the disturbance. And UC is the port controller. And this is my U because I have two inputs. So the controller and the disturbance. So the first one is the for controller, which is zero. And second one is for the disturbance. I will assume I have zero initial condition. So for simulation, I will use lsim for simulation uh, and i will put the open system which is the state space the u for my two input the control and disturbance so this is the time which is from zero to simulation time and it's divided by the sampling time and the initial condition and here i will just simulate my system which is the y which is the as i said before uh, the position of my car uh, the car body and I also uh, uh, plot the, uh, the, the system with the disturbance. So let's run the code and see how the system will behave. So as you can see from the, the, the response, so the, the, the black is the road disturbance. So the black is the road disturbance. And the blue is the system response. So how your car, the, the displacement, the position of your car body will be behave when the pumps uh, comes or uh, appear in your road so as you can see here this is the disturbance and this is the response of the system and it's how your car will be go up and down when the road has a disturbance so this is the full video so in this video we will uh, understand what's the suspension system and then we will we drive the equation of the system and then we will build the state space and we simulate the system and we see how the system thank you for watching